Cage Mines, we got with us Lana Venata, RFA 36, you're going for the RFA Featherweight title, I know you believe it's your title already, tell us about it. Yeah, I'm excited, uh, you know, we just, we called the matchmaker and said, hey, I'm dropping a 45, don't 55 for right now, give me the toughest guy you got, and said, here's the champ, and right away I was like, yeah, absolutely, I was talking about fighting this guy. Uh, when he fought Ricky Musgrave, wasn't that impressed with him. So I'm excited. I'm excited to get it on. Honey Barcelos, we've seen uh, what I was calling an interesting right hand that he throws. Looks like a fly swatter. What yeah. do you see from his game? Uh, I think he's very predictable. Um, he does have a good right hand. He's got a weird overhand right, and he has uh, um, a straight right that's got no telegraph on it. So it's dangerous with that. Other than that, I think he's pretty predictable. Um, Nothing spectacular. He's, he's got a lot of stuff on paper, but I think uh, I think he's just good when he's the bully, when he's the better guy, and I'm gonna be the bigger, faster fighter, and he's not gonna bully me. Ricky Musgrave made him look like a million bucks. If you can rewatch that fight, they're just going insane. Glover Teixeira is going insane. Like they think he could be UFC world champion that night. He was so on it, and Musgrave. So, were you able to take away anything from that performance besides those right hands of his and say, well, that's what he's dangerous at? Or you chalk it up to he had a good night, other guy had a bad night, not much to see there. Yeah, chalked it up. To, I mean, there, there are obviously hard things to take away from uh, the point of view of Haley's game and his mindset. But, um, yeah, the main thing I took away is that Ricky Musgrave is just a WD-40 and somebody fights in the cage. He's looking stiff, very stiff. And then for you, coming off of the big knockout, now dropping down weight class, this is going to be your third different weight class that I've seen you fight in. What makes now the time to go down to 45 or to really press getting down there? You know, it's just the competition's getting tougher, and the higher level you get, the bigger your opponents get each weight class. The last dude I fought, I mean, yeah, it was a quick, uh, it was a quick fight. I took care of business real quick, but he was massive, man. He was way bigger than me. Um, so, you know... I want to have a size advantage for once. I believe you stand at 5'9". I'm sorry, I'm 5'9". Uh, I walk around high 160s. And then clean, so. Chad, when you fought like 6'2", something? Yeah, he, he was over 6 foot. And, you know, much thicker, bigger legs, bigger chest, bigger back. Much bigger man than I was. Now getting this opportunity, getting the title fight. Does it sunk in? Are you able to enjoy your first televised main event? Your first title fight? That's all the same to me, man. You know, title fight, regular fight, main event. Man, it doesn't matter where I'm fighting, who I'm fighting. I come up in the same mindset, and I enjoy it just as much, no matter what. Well, tell us about that mindset. <laughs> uh, it's just kind of being in the present moment, man, and um, you know, not stressing about it. Really, don't think about the fight, and yeah, when it comes around, it comes around, and I get in there, just go with the flow and enjoy it. I believe it was Fight Lan earlier today. I was watching a video. There's some amazing stuff in there. And you see Lan back at the old gym on the rings. And I've had the pleasure of walking in here sometimes and seeing some kind of tightrope of concoction across the cage. And someone balancing their way across it. So tell us a little bit about your athleticism and what I would consider some unique strength and conditioning training from you. Yeah, so, so the, that film is uh, it's Fight Night Films, Fight, Fight Night, Night TV. Um, but yeah, as far as that goes, man, it's the same guy that Connor brought out with him, Ido Portal, to his last fight against Aldo. I've been following him for four or five years now, and practicing different locomotion patterns, and uh, different gymnastics, tumbling, ring work, um, you know, all different body weight exercises, getting on the slack line, um, you know, working my balance and the core muscles and the coordination, and even different light stuff, man, like taking sticks and moving them around my feet, on my mind, on my back, trying to, you know, uh, move it from the top of my feet to the soles of my feet, all these different movement patterns that are complex and just build different neural networks and connections in your body and just help your overall athleticism and your body awareness. And how did you stumble on to following this train of thought? Yeah, so um, the whole movement thing started. Uh, I was wrestling with uh, Mr. Goito Perez and I blew my shoulder out, dislocated my shoulder and... Uh, I was looking up rehab stuff, and came across an article about hanging, just hanging like a monkey, you know, completely relaxed and helping to reshape the shoulder joint, and then just, uh, that was the beginning, just followed it down the rabbit hole. And now from you, we've seen also, I've heard, the Jedi mindset is what you want to live by, so tell us about that. Nah, yeah, so I, I 
I was uh, digging that Jedi philosophy for a little bit. Um, you always bounce around. It's always everything's changing. Everything's in flux. Um, but it's, yeah, the mindset I really carry right now is just uh, more of like a Zen Taoist mindset, which is similar to what you see in the Jedi Star Wars flicks and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's just being present, being calm, being empty, uh, being receptive to whatever happens, and just going with the flow. Going with that flow, and then talking about your movement and also precision. I gotta say, it was remarkable watching you hit that bag earlier. I saw you come in from like ten different directions, and you're still kicking the bag at the same spot. So different entries, and still the same point. Tell us about practice that makes this precision possible. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just um, we're coming towards the end of the camp now, and we're in the last week of training. Um, over the past seven weeks, it's just been. I've had days where I'm going hard, days where I'm going light, and on those light days, I'm just drilling technique. You know, I have a certain handful of techniques I'm working on specifically for Hayoni, and I'm in a thousand reps before this fight happens. So, you know, we're in the 900 range right now, so it's just, just instantaneous actions. For moving on. out here and being out in New Mexico, it's about almost six years now, right? Five years. Five years. Being out here this whole time. How can you talk about how you've changed? You just <laughs> there's a lot really yeah. to cover from coming out here with the wrestling kind of background and this whole transformation striker and taking on uh, this next level fighter um, kind of mantra that Brandon Gibson told me. You know, you're one of these next level guys. Yeah, it's just one of those things, man. When I came out here, I thought. Uh, yeah, I looked at these fighters that were high level. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I want to be like. I'm gonna imitate that guy. I'm gonna imitate that guy. Um, I think it's part of the process. You start early on, you learn the very basics. Then you imitate people. Then you start stealing their techniques a little bit. Then you kind of just empty everything that you learned, and you start making your own. You start creating your own techniques, your own flow, your own style that fits to your personality, that fits to your uh, abilities and your weaknesses, and it's just kind of come along in its own process with the help of my coaches and I love where it is right now and then just when was it how long did it take before you in years process that five years out here and is it just really this last year that you felt you've come into exploring uh, your own self yeah, say the last year year and a half really just burst into my own and um, I think I've, I've kind of been there for a little bit longer but I'm really now starting to believe in it I'm really starting to have the confidence in my own skills and then, how long did it take in the gym to get that confidence to have your own style? Because the hands down, your movement, people watch the last RFA, it's completely unique. There's some other guys in the same realm of thought, but yeah. yours is unique to you, obviously. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm doing stuff that nobody else is doing. I have techniques that people have never seen before that I've completely created on my own, you know, just in the moment. And then they've come out beautifully, kind of refined them afterwards. But, um, to have that confidence myself in the gym, it's just it's taking thousands of ass whoopings in here and getting stronger until those people that whoop my ass, you know, I'm standing toe to toe with them with confidence. So. From RFA, you asked them to give you the toughest guy. Yeah. Was there a minute of surprise though when they said the champion and you were like, well, cool, you know, I didn't think they would give me that tough of a guy, but all right, I'll take it definitely. <laughs> nah, the only thing I was thinking was, man, like, ah. I got to drop weight class and fight five rounds. <laughs> but nah, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't surprised that they gave me the title shot, dropping to 45. They, they're pretty, I think they're pretty happy with me and that they think I'm going to have a bright future. So, I'm pretty And then yeah, this other 10 pounds, how are you feeling making this weight cut? Um, I made the weight cut back in August, and right now, same time out, I'm two pounds lighter now than I was then, so, um, yeah, it should be no problem. It'll be tough towards the end, it's a big weight cut, I'll be cutting, you know, a decent portion of weight the last day, but yeah, I'm becoming strong. I feel great. What's the message for the fans? Tune in if you want to see some creativity and some art. That's all it is. <laughs> Man, Minata, who do you got a shout out to? On it, parents, everybody here at Jackson Wink. Thank you, guys. RFA as well. Thank you for the time. Cool.